Okay, so I'm going to walk through the steps here from creating a feature to uh, downloading it, editing it, creating a project on GitHub, putting it in, putting the project on GitHub, and then posting the project on Drupal Features. So um, I'm on our features test site. Um, I'm just going to create a feature called test feature. And um, this is a So we um, we version them like this, like stand, standard. Um, let me increase the size of this a little bit. Standard Drupal naming convention. Um, what I normally do is, while they're still in development and unstable, I keep them keep incrementing the alphas. Um, once it's stable and it's just kind of bug fixes and stuff, that's when I move it into beta. Um, so our syntax here. Um, for the update URL is drupalfeatures.stanford.edu slash fserver slash project name. So this is test underscore feature. And then the um, Drupal major version. And I'm just going to, let's say, I'm just going to export the tags vocabulary. And that's it. doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. OK, so I've got this feature. I guess I had another one called test feature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Moving right along. I, apparently I have done this before. Um, I'm going to open that up. Okay, so there's my test feature. I've got um, taxonomy.inc. I've got the .info file and the .module file. Next thing that I'm going to do on GitHub, I'm logged in to SUSWS. I'm going to create a new repo here. Okay, I'm going to call this test. Oops. Um, the owner, I'm going to, it, by default, the owner goes to you. So I'm going to change the owner to SUSWS. I'm going to call it test feature. Um, you can do it public or private. Almost everything that we do is public, especially the features. The only things we need to worry about making private is if they've got Stanford-specific identity assets or anything like um, these, yeah, themes and stuff like that. Um, you can initialize it with a README, um, and then it, this lets you clone it immediately. So you've got this project created on here, and you've got a git clone URL right here. So I've got um, I've got this directory set up. Change the size of this. So I've got this directory set up. Documents temp. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. Um, I'm gonna run git clone. So this I think you can do in the UI. Um, you can clone from GitHub to local. Um, so I've got a test feature, a readme, and that's it. And I've got one branch on my GitHub. So you navigate to the directory that you wanted to turn into the, the repo. And while you were there in the command line, you were going to turn it. Yeah. So I, I changed, I did a um, change directory to documents temp. Yeah. And then I did git clone this git URL. Um, our development practice generally is to leave the master branch empty and um, create, develop in Stanford major, in uh, Drupal major branches. So I'm going to create a new branch. Okay, so I'm in my test feature directory. Um, I'm going to create a new branch with git branch. And then um, if I run git status, I'm actually on master, on the master branch, so I want I need to check out this branch that I just created. It won't do that right away. Okay, so there's still nothing in here but the readme, so I need to put some files in here and commit them. So, go over here, select all of these, put them in there. The other thing that we want to do as part of our best practice 
is always have a change log, a license, and a readme. Um, the license is uh, is GPL v2. I linked it from um, the st the features best practices document. Um, you can uh, there's a couple, there's a couple links in here, and then change log and readme. Um, so the readme I'm actually going to delete me delete the readme not text. This .md um, format is what um, GitHub uses. Sorry, my text wrangler is going to be slow. <coughs> um, the license is GPLv2. It's just boilerplate. Um, change log. All we have to do is this, and you can see on some of the other projects kind of what goes into the change log. But for this, it doesn't really matter because we haven't changed anything. Is that manually updated text file? Yep. I I don't know yet if there's a way to generate it automatically from Git um, commit logs. Okay, so what do I got? I got six files in here. I've got a project. I've got a branch. Um, I want to first I need to add things to be committed. So I'm going to run git add dot. Git add dot means the dot means here. It means I'm going to add everything in here to be committed. And then I'm going to run git commit. Um, I'm just going to actually run git commit and show you what happens. So it um, Enters, it opens up a text editor for you to um, edit the commit message. If you leave this empty, the, it aborts the commit, as it says up there. Um, I'm just going to write initial commit. Save that. Now, when I run git log, you can see my initial commit. Um, two of them? That's weird. Did I? Uh, oh, I think I know what happened. This was um, this one is the um, the README when it was created. So that's of the of the README. I think that's just out of. Um, I think that just comes from GitHub. So when I go back to GitHub, what's going to happen? N nothing, because I haven't pushed it yet. Okay, so I've got this locally. Okay, I've got the 7x1x locally. I've got, it shows what my remotes are. The only thing that's on remotes are the master. So I'm going to... Um, Do you need to tag it first? Nope. Because branches are separate from tags. Tags are like snapshots. Branches are like roads. Okay. So I'm going to push to remote. This so git push remote and then the branch name. Oh, I lied. Not remote. Git push origin. I always have to remember what the syntax is. Okay, so now it pushed this new branch to susws. So it's got the README here on the master branch. But when I go and look at 7x1x. It's got all these files, right? So now I want to tag it, okay? I want to push a release because it shows when I go to look at tags on GitHub, it doesn't show anything. So I'm going to tag. This is where, um, so the naming syntax is 7x1x for the branch. Tags get um, whole, whole numbers, and then this will be alpha one. Can you tell me what a tag really means? Yeah, it's like a um, so each commit is um, each commit has a unique hash. Okay. Tag is just kind of a human readable version name for a commit. Why didn't you just tag it the first time before you pushed it? Could have. I just wanted to separate it out for demo purposes. Mm -hmm. Because the next part is if I just run git push right now, it's going to say everything's up to date. You have to say git push and pass the tags flag for it to actually pass the tags. Okay, so it passes the new tag. We go and look at the tags. It automatically, it's amazing how fast this is, but it automatically pushes um, a tarball up to GitHub. Oh, it zipped it for you. Yeah. 
So, uh, 